Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome once again to another episode of The Advocates. Like we said here, five panelists, five topics, various no hobas perspective. For time constraint, I ask is to provoke the debate, taking on those topics too hot to handle by your run of the mail programs. Whilst yours is to sustain the discussions at home, in your offices, and in an outside government. Today, I'll be the pilot, I'll be on the pilot seat and cruising at an altitude of 5,000 feet above sea level with 10 minutes per topic, by raising a flag for our heroes, not allowing their labor to be in vain. Uche's advocacy brings things closer home. She exercises the tough love to her parents, which they seem unable to show to their children. Ekene is declaring Nigerian for say, ha, Ekene, when did that one happen? Tokwe Fashua, that is, not Tokwe Alabi, will be tackling the deregistration of political parties and may as well be asking if it is tantamount to a sleight of hand or mathematics, 7 minus 72 or 74 equal 2. Anyway, we'll wait to find out. Chuka is on part three of his trilogy on Lagos, and today he's looking at urbanization. Hmm, I say Chuka for Minister of Urban Development. Anyway, what say you? In the meantime, we tackle the issue that concerns all of us. You know how we roll. After the break, I'll break the ice. The labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. It's a line from the first stanza of our national anthem, but our heroes are hardly recognized until they pass on. And even when they pass on, we seldom celebrate or recognize them. Yet, the labor of our heroes past. For our today, they laid down their tomorrow, dying unsung and uncelebrated. Not even a befitting epitaph on their grave to tell generations to come of their great deeds. Here lies the remains of a great soldier who laid down his life so that the rest of us can live to see today. Yet, when civilized world celebrate their fallen heroes in schools, airports, mall, public places and gatherings, we wish we came from among them, but failed to learn a thing or two to motivate or celebrate our own. Just recently, we celebrated our Armed Forces Remembrance Day for the year 2020. Rates were laid at various state capitals by the state governors and at the federal capital in Abuja by the president after the annual rituals of fanfare and ceremony, which began with official begging at our various local and international airports by men and women of the Nigerian Legion and members of the Nigerian Civil Defense Corps for 20 naira, 15 naira, and 100 naira. Money that never gets to the family of the fallen soldiers. What other national plans do we have for our fallen soldiers, private or public? If I may ask, if I ask you, now who you go ask? We do not even have accurate records of the ones we have lost since the fight against Boko Haram and insurgency in the northeastern part of Nigeria. Not to talk of the ones we lost during the height of militancy in the Niger Delta. If you ask for the civil war record, then certainly you want to start another world war. How do we mount the labor of our heroes daily, yet fail to recognize that we are alive today because of their sacrifice? How do we deprive our military of weapons to fight by stealing money made for weapons and expect a country of peace and unity? What motivation is there to fight when a soldier whose salaries and allowances are barely paid is confronted in the battlefield by the same people they once arrested and handed over to the state, since such terrorists are supposedly rehabilitated and asked to go and sin no more? How do you console the wife and children of a soldier who died fighting Boko Haram insurgents when the state rehabilitated and set free the killer of their breadwinner when same state cannot guarantee Gary and water for such families? How do you expect the parents of a soldier who was killed in battle to feel, seeing the killer of their wards being rehabilitated with tax paid from their sweat? 
Today, I salute the amazing courage, honor, and sacrifice of our fallen soldiers who have and are still giving up their life so we can be free. I salute them and ask that we never forget that for our freedom, they pay the ultimate price. Because they value our lives more than theirs, despite not fulfilling the promises we made to them, yet they fulfill in full the promise they made to us the day they enlisted in the army. I raise my hand to our true heroes, some dead and some alive. I celebrate you now and always as you battle to keep our country safe, despite the unavailability of modern weapons or the obvious provocation by those who are supposed to shield you in battle. I salute you as you sleep out there on cold nights without sometimes blanket or water, even with money in your pocket, nothing to buy as you relate only with reptiles and grasses. May your sun never set even in death. Today, I remember you amongst others, too numerous to mention, Colonel Abuali, Flight Officer D.L. Toyam, Group Captain U.N. Akman, Squadron Leader A.O. Swara, Squadron Leader B.M. Baba Ari, Flight Lieutenant Uakeli, Flight Lieutenant E. Owe, Sergeant Obina, Corporal Chidozie, Corporal Dashi, and the hundreds of you who answer the call to defend and uphold our country's honor and glory with your lives. For they may not forget, but we will never forget you. For though our tribes and tongue may differ, in brotherhood, we stand today and celebrate you. My advocacy would be until we learn to truly understand, value, and appreciate the labor of our fallen heroes and provide the needed infrastructure and assistance and support to our military and the loved ones left by our fallen heroes. We can never, never truly have a country bound in freedom, peace, and unity. Yeah, uh, Libras, thank you for that. I feel as if I shall keep quiet. Minutes of silence after you said that. Yes, yeah, so thank you for that. Like. You know, it was like um, it, what struck me because this time I, last I cried year, writing this. Yes, yeah, this, I mean, this, script. this time last year you did an advocacy like this, mm -hmm. again, and I appreciate that you do this because I feel that the real strength of this advocacy is to continue to keep these uh, heroes in our remembrance. Mm -hmm. um, so I think enough can be said. I even wonder if more could be done in schools for children to encounter. You know, maybe they could even go and visit schools or schools can do their own kind of uh, education for the children so that they can get to know that actually in spite of how badly things are going in Nigeria, there are people who still believe mm. in the call to lay down their life for their nation. Mm. You know, I mean, one of my colleagues <coughs> did a feature on a soldier who despite the wrong that was done to him was still saying, look, he's a soldier to the core. Despite the fact that they incarcerated him wrongly and his family suffered for it, he still kept saying he, even today he wants to serve because he's a soldier, that's all mm -hmm. he knows. The only one thing I'll say though, is just quickly to say that the children, the child soldiers that, from what I understand, that were being rehabilitated, I, I still have a sympathy there. You know, I'm not for putting Boko Haram fighters back to fight with, I can see the injustice there for those who have you know, lost loved ones in the field. But if these are truly child soldiers that were abducted, and then they were, you know, uh, what's the word, indoctrinated, mm -hmm. I feel that they, they've really suffered enough. They really need to be given their own attention and rehabilitated just because of the trauma they've mm. gone through. I don't think it needs to be seen as taken away from the honor we give to our fallen soldiers. That, that's really all I have to say. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, I, well, again, you know, thank you for your advocacy. Um, I really, it, it, being a soldier in Nigeria is actually suicidal. There's really no word for it because you don't get the right equipment, you don't get the support you need. They just send you out. They don't even give you food or water. I mean, I came across a video where all these, these soldiers were crying out, begging that, you know, come to our aid, give us food, give us water. So that, that hmm. shows that anybody that goes that route has to be, they have to be considered extremely brave and courageous to be doing that. Um, it is important that we get to know um, what is really going on because we cannot appreciate, I mean, when he was saying we, 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 I was thinking, yeah, who is the, who is the we really? I mean, the go it's the government. If the government does not value these soldiers, then how are we then to even know what they're getting on with? When they die, they don't even want us to know. Right. When, uh, when anything is happening, they don't want us to know. So how are we then supposed to get to know who these people are that are dying for us? We can't even appreciate what they have done for us, what they've gone through, the sacrifices they made, because we don't really get to hear of it. Thank God for social media, because we're beginning to see what's going on in the background. Like he said, I really believe that 
children should start to know what is going on. They, you know, maybe these soldiers could come, come to their schools mm -hmm. and actually get, you know, give talks assembly, about yeah. these things and, and explain what you know, they, they've sacrificed. I think it's just we are in such a sad state where we can't even appreciate the people that fight for us. Um, we, like you said, we're just giving, uh, bringing back rehabilitated Boko Haram fighters. These, these are the people they're seeing. They're even seeing how better uh, treated that these people are. For instance, I saw how they were giving them water, the rehabilitated ones, giving them water, food, and everything. Meanwhile, our soldiers are crying and begging for these things. There's something very wrong with what's going on in our country right yeah, now. Yeah, there is, definitely. I, I, I keep remembering what um, Boris Johnson said. He said, you know, lock them up and throw away the key. Mm. I lock who up? The, the terrorists. terrorists. Okay. And I strongly support that. All this rehabilitation they're talking about. I don't understand. Just a little For bit. the child soldiers? It's, uh, well, well child the child soldiers, soldiers fine, will deal with them in a, men mm. in, in a, in a, in a mental, Most correctional time. center or whatever, mm. but they will be incarcerated. Mm. Is it, that's incarceration, yes, isn't it? Yes. it really, it's just not crimes. prison, that's all. Mm. Um, but what I'm saying is, you know, we, I don't know what, what's, we, we, have, we have brought the army down to nothing. Nothing. So I don't blame us for, for not knowing what to do about soldiers, mm. what, how to feel about mm. them and their families, mm. because we don't know them anymore. Yeah. Well, I don't think we know what soldiering is about mm. anymore. We used to actually, back in the younger days, I remember Gowan's regime, I knew what soldiering mm. was, you know, and maybe we had just come out of war and that had made our soldiers, mm. we had just <laughs> seen, yeah, they, yeah, maybe, I'm not saying we should have a war, but no, it no. looks like our soldiers haven't seen anything to push them and whatever. But they're fighting all the time, all these terrorism. They're, they're fighting. not fighting them. That's the problem. That's what, that's what no, I'm no, saying. They, they, what, they, what's, they, what's there's happening? something wrong. It's, the money is not getting there. It's money. Mm. It's money. Mm. Everything about Nigeria is money. But I almost have a You're not paying people. The, you're, not buying, mm. you're not buying them arms. You're not organizing them. I guess money is the only way you show that you value them. Do you know what it means for your commander to sit down in Abuja and buy properties? And with you allowances the front that line. Uh, are supposed to, to be, be yours exactly. mm. for fighting. Yeah, for if, fighting. If, yes, if, you and know, if you know what it means to drink mud water mm. in the yeah. battleground mm. and yeah, look, I even only for see. you to arrest these same people and somebody says because they are child soldiers and so you rehabilitate them mm. for yes. a month and then you throw them back, back and they come back to confront you. Anyway, that's a discussion for another day before I start crying. Failure to remember is often a reflection of the value we place on something. Well, after the break, Uche challenges the way we show our value for our children. As parents, we all better sit up for this one. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they want. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. If nobody asks, it's presumed we're going in the right direction when the opposite may be the case. How is your child being raised? I have sat back and tried to keep shtum on this matter to avoid being called a parent shamer, but I no longer can. Parents, how is your child being raised? What are we teaching them by our actions and inactions? What are we directly or indirectly exposing them to? A mother decides to adorn the delicate head of her baby girl with heavy braids or hair pieces. The child is further decorated with jewelry, hair bands and hair clips to beautify her, all on a child that is barely two years old. The child ends up looking older than her years and thus the race to adulthood has, is ignited. 
We'd paint her nails and put makeup on her young, delicate skin, dressing her in inappropriate clothes, just like a mini adult version, navel and show and short skirts, so short you can see her underwear. We call it plain dress up. That is all, that it's all innocent, but is it really? Are we teaching our daughters that looks trump substance? As we go about our business, often leaving our children unsupervised in front of the TV or iPad, they are being exposed to unsavory content in the form of sexy music videos, disinformation, and explicit images, or worse, strangers with sinister intent. We're quick to make excuses. We have no choice. We're too busy. Our parents were at work all the time and we turned out okay. It is no longer unusual to see kids at parties trying out highly sexual dance moves involving pelvic thrusts and twerking or using swear words as parents either look on or even cheer them on. What message are we sending to our kids on good manners and decency? Are we unwittingly exposing our children to predators? To compensate for our absence, we take to literally spoiling our, our kids with material things and allowing them to get away with otherwise unacceptable behavior, such as disrespecting us, yes, their parents, and those around them. We spare the rod in the bid to be their friend. Are our decisions and actions or inactions training them up to be emotionally healthy, responsible adults, or quite the opposite? I wonder. In the UK and US, Children as young as five are being taught about masturbation, homosexuality, and transgenderism in schools. I recently watched a video of something called Drag Queen Story Hour, where children are read to by drag queens in full drag queen attire and makeup. Parents stand by and watch as their children are systematically indoctrinated through the education system, arguing it's all harmless and promotes tolerance and acceptance. They should learn about the world, good or bad. We stand by as our children are encouraged to act on their feelings and to take serious life-altering decisions such as gender reassignment. We stand by as our children are told there is no God, there are more than two genders, right is wrong, wrong is right. Isn't it ironic that the very people that should be protecting these children are actually the ones causing the damage or allowing it to happen? Yes, parents, I'm talking to us. All over the world, there is a very noticeable decline in moral standards and values, resulting in high crime rates and antisocial behavior, thanks to us parents. It is time we stop abdicating our responsibilities and pay closer attention to our children and our style of parenting. If we are to halt and reverse this destructive trend, we must understand that our job is to protect and impart good practices, morals, and values to our children, and not to overindulge or neglect them and let the world raise them. Um, you know, that's the world we live in these days, like they say, where you say transgender is okay, mm. it is okay to be a homosexual, Everything but is it okay. is forbidden to marry more than one wife, you know? So these are the ideas, these, you know, people, they come around, they force these ideas on you, and then we swallow these ideas hook, line, and sinker. Growing up, even in America, in the UK, they used to spank children. Mm. Ah, and now, do you know, someone just came with the idea. It's now abuse. You know, it's, it's an abuse. Mm. You say because some parents go the extreme, so you just ban everybody from doing it. And yet, the same people will tell you, spoil the, spare the rod, you spoil the child. Mm. The same child... That's why there's high rate of suicide, because the children never grow up to know failure. And the first time they go out there, they know that there is failure. Mm. You fail in school, they will say is, um, how do they even call it? They have a name for them yeah, now. Um, um, but I, they I, say, I, I oh, forgotten. you tried anyway. I've forgotten. Yeah. And so <laughs> your, children, your parents no longer shout on you. And so the first day you go out of the real world and then your boss will scream at you. You're like, oh, they hate me here. You want to kill yourself. So we need to find a way to actually balance this. Thank God you're talking about it yeah. uh, because gradually uh, most of us, especially in metropolitan cities like Lagos, are copying this trend faster. Yes. And you go to parties, you see children twerking and the parents are clapping. Mm. Oh, there my daughter can dance. Mm. And, you know, so we really need to allow, let people know there should be a balance between this modernity mm. and our own way of life. Yes. Hey, can I just chip in? Um, mm. Great Please stuff do. from Uche. <laughs> Thank and, you. Um, I, well, I think it's split into two as well. If you go to the really poor areas, um, you see that the parents are not even there. 
all yeah. over the place. I mean, it's very, very interesting. Even in Abuja, where I live, you know, and you see different cultures. Uh, people who allow their children, even living in gated estates, children two years old, you allow them out at six o'clock in the morning, mm. they are roaming all over the place, and you know, from a certain part of the country. And then you begin to get the idea that people don't even know how to raise children at mm. all. And, and of course, by the time you go to the very poor area, that's normal. Yeah. You know, you give a child of three years things to go and sell early in the mm -hmm. morning mm -hmm. and yeah. move around the place and so yeah. on. Uh, and then there's this, the middle class people who their whole idea of parenting is to go and fight the teachers in school. Oh, Why yes. did you touch my child? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Fine. Um, it's not okay for teachers to lay their hands on children. But how, where do we draw the line? Mm. I mean, sometimes, you know, you just deliberately, like our people say, uh, now snake the bone long thing. Mm. And the reason why this world is where it is today is because people try to replicate themselves mm. in their children. Yes. Yeah, that's true. So you're yes. an area boy, you have a son, you want to raise him to be an area boy. Mm. But of course, luckily, there are some people who say, well, I'm an area boy, but this son Would must turn out differently. Yeah. And then, of course, so uh, it plays both ways. So it's great education. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, all these things that's going on in the world. I think that, uh, like, he, like a liberal said, um, 50 years ago, in the United Kingdom, if they found someone to be, let's say, you know, um, homosexual, homosexual mm. uh, you know, you, you went in for 50 years imprisonment. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 100 years ago, they would hang you, hang, you. hang drawn, and quartered, mm. you know. <laughs> now, we're not saying that we should do that here, mm. but all I want to say is that we have a right to protect our society and the evolution of our society. That nobody has a right to dictate to us how things like this should, should run. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to follow on from what you said, is it, sometimes we zoom in on the transgender and homosexual because it's the more obvious one, yeah. especially in a society. But actually, what you said and why it reminds me of my advocacy last week, except that I wasn't as pointed, mm -hmm. you know, I said sacrificing our sons and daughters, yes. is that a lot of times we're parenting from a selfish self-validating, yeah. you know, almost like self-indulgent perspective. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at what is it that is your own idea of right, even when you know that that's your right, I mean, be jeopardizing your child's, you know, so like you say, area boy, you, mm. you, you want to feel that if your child is behaving like you, it makes you feel cool. Mm. So, you know, even when I was looking at your topic, a lot of the dressing, you find mothers who do mini-me. Mm. So they wear an attire yes. and their daughter wear the same attire and they feel cool. Mm. And I said, what is this about? This is all about me. Yes. So your parenting is about you, not about your child. Yeah. And mm. so I, I just might, uh, just to piggyback on what you're saying, we need to be more deliberate. It's not to say you arrive perfect yes. just because you have a child. Mm. But if you're deliberate, you say, look, just because... I'm not doing the best for myself doesn't mean I shouldn't aspire for better for mm -hmm. my child. Mm -hmm. So deliberately set a higher standard for your child. Deliberately make sure that even where you fall short, your child will be enabled to do better than you. Mm -hmm. So you take you out of the picture and let the child be the focus of your choices. You know? So even if you have to confess that, okay, I may be falling short, maybe I may, I may not be a, a wizard in the kitchen, for example. But if enabling, equipping my child with skills in the kitchen is better, I will encourage my child yes. to learn how to cook. I, you yeah. know, just yeah. because I don't like cooking doesn't mean the child shouldn't Absolutely. pay attention to cooking. Mm. And then sometimes we feel just very quickly, because Chuka, you must say something. Mm. You know, sometimes we feel that oh, parenting, especially for the middle class, involves maybe taking your child to the latest, uh, yeah. you know, outing, you're spending money, maybe up beat here. Give them the latest but device. Actually, I found that if your child hangs around you, mm. goes to market with you, spends time in the home with you, that is education. Yes, it is. That is keeping them occupied. So why are you not letting them do house chores? We did house chores. Yes, Let them follow you around and yeah. clean their room. Yeah. Let them follow you around exactly. and cook in the kitchen. Let them yeah. follow you and go yeah. to yeah. market. Yeah. Second, and they'll be engaged. My son once went out with us and then, when I picked his phone to check what he was doing, he was chatting with his friend. He said, that one asked him, where are you? He said, with parents, you know, boring adult things. <laughs> okay. Now me and my wife supposed to go. Yeah. But they followed us. They sat yes. down there and they did. I would have given them an assignment to do at home, mm. that when I come, I would... So you should be uh, thinking about what is appropriate. But I mean, Chuka, what, but what's, I, but what's I think, your... But I think all I have to say from Uche's um, thing is that nobody's going to force me into moving forward. That's that word, forward, progressive. Mm. Mm. You can't tell me that um, a 12-year-old boy wants to be a girl mm. and that he should be given the chance and should see a psychologist because of that. And then at the same time, as Libera said, you are telling me that if I marry more than one woman, mm. there's something wrong with mm. me. I don't, I mean, that, that in itself tells you that we continue to get fed this rubbish and it's time we stopped yes. and said, look, we also have our own values. Mm. Well, as far as I'm concerned, Uche, Uche, you're merely calling out the kind of stuff that we are probably aware of already. And that's if we tell ourselves the truth anyway. Still on the vibe of home truths, I'll be laying down a frank assessment of the state of the nation after the break. 
For those of us who didn't know or choose to do ostrich mentality, I'm saying Nigeria for sale. Did any of us hear the news some weeks back of how our big brother America mandated for Nigeria to take custody of another tranche of Abacha's returned loot? Our leadership had to sign an undertaking that they would utilize the same returned loot to effect three infrastructural development projects or reimburse the money. In other words, the government of Nigeria would agree to be supervised by the American government or at least their representatives to ensure that this agreement was carried out or else. Some have likened it to when a rich relative agrees to help a poor relative out financially, but due to their irresponsibility only agrees to the agreement or arrangement on condition that they would monitor the intervention directly, be it the child's school fees or the poor relative's children or rent, etc. Under such situations, it's evident that the ap applicant for help has surely hit rock bottom. They don't need anyone to interpret the writing on the wall for them. So, the United States of America makes such a demand of Nigeria, a sovereign nation, never mind that they are culpable for having harbored the illegal loot for so many years, benefiting from the corresponding interest it would have generated. And horror of horrors, Nigeria signs the agreement. Even more troubling is that some of us actually believe that this arrangement is for the best, the lesser of two evils. Before too long, will we not be putting Nigeria up for sale? As my people say, to read Mbaje, yet it's hardly even made headlines. So here I am flagging it up for us in case we missed it. And make no mistake, this is as audacious and bold a vote of no confidence in our government as we're ever going to get. Our leadership over the years have failed us big time. The only way from here is up. Let all hands be on deck to become politically engaged henceforth. 2023 is just around the corner. Hitherto, we've been brainwashed into believing that the choice was between the twin power-grabbing institutions of APC and PDP, that we neglected to identify the roadmap to our national development or even to fight for it. Hence, we became mere passengers in a not-so-merry-go-round. Now it's time to hop off the helter-skelter and to do what we ought to have done long before now, to build coalitions along the lines of our ideologies or belief systems. What vision of Nigeria do we have? What ideologies do we care enough about to want to preserve for our beloved nation? Such as the empowering of the people's voice, social welfare, inclusivity in decision-making for women and the youth, an expression of tribalism that is complementary and not divisive, developing Afrocentric homegrown solutions such as Chuka has been advocating for to our challenges, restructuring our economy along regional lines and so forth. As we actively engage, we're bound to discover two things or, or more, but that the things that unite us in the name of our nation's good are more than those things that seemingly divide us. And ultimately that the numbers are in our favor since they that are with us are bound to be more than those that are against us. Yeah, well. Amazing stuff. Yeah. Um, I'll pick it up from there because you actually spoke about, I'm hoping that the politics will help. Mm. Um, yeah, getting engaged politically. And I can tell you that building coalitions is incredibly, incredibly difficult. I always mock the youth that um, uh, if you want to build coalitions in politics, try and build a coalition on a WhatsApp platform where <laughs> you are admin and, you know, you see the kind of fights that go on there. But it's, it's great to really encourage um, our young people and uh, because we're more in number, like you said. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's that cartoon that depicts um, the situation where you see a lot of people balanced on the hedge. The leader is balanced on the edge. A lot of people are the ones standing on the plank on this side. All they need to do is just walk away and that leader will, <laughs> will, yeah. fall, off. Uh, will fall off. So, but... Uh, regarding the uh, U.S. Um, the funds, the, 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 the funny thing about Abacha loot is that uh, our current president used to say that Abacha did not steal money. Yes. And he actually also worked for Abacha as, 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 as PEF. Mm. Right? Oh, but that's hate speech. Well, yeah, I don't know. I'm just stating a fact. He did say that Abacha did not steal yes, money. Yes, he said that. He said people but... are just lampooning mm. him. So mm. I, I don't know how it feels now no. when all this money is coming. And then, of course, now we're now being taught be schooled like children to say you are better use this money look like you rightly said we've hit rock bottom mm. right. i'm hoping that something will give from henceforth uh, we tried our own luck in politics uh, you know in 2019 didn't quite work out the way we thought you know maybe more don't worry when people. i send my oil well i will yeah. sponsor oh. you you know <laughs> so it's really very interesting and it's a very terrible situation you have given us the you know and again you can see the, the front page of the punch today 
says that the United, European Union is trying to review their visa policy for Nigeria. Oh, yeah. my. You can see that um, the, the they're ganging up against us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're and even trying to change our I'm just saying that at some point in time, we will not have a choice but to sit down and fight it out. In yeah, this place. No, Nigeria, about, go Barack on. Obama, when he visited Ghana, he said the solution to the problems of Africa lies in Africa. Um, the U.S. today are what power because they sat down, fixed their ass, yeah. and, and so it becomes attractive. You go to Dubai, they sat down and said, you know what, instead of taking our oil money to go spend in the West, let's bring the West to us by mm. spending our oil money mm. here. Mm -hmm. and, and so, here, what do we do? We take ours, we take it to these people. Like you said, they will house it, spend it. Spend even they probably that money would have gone more interest than the, than the actual itself, fund, yeah. and then they return the fund to you because they still want to play that big brother role. Yeah. You see, we are giving you this money, but we we'll tell you how you spend it because mm -hmm. you are, you know, a developing nation. Mm -hmm. So the only lesson for us is look, this money instead of taking it out, let us use it here, spend it here, and then that's the only way nobody will detect to us. The problem is you find out our leaders you steal so much, like Ato Zerebe once said. They steal the one they want and the one they don't need. Mm. And then someday you ferry this money abroad, it becomes somebody else's money, it detects you how to re repatriate yeah, it. Yeah. It should be a lesson to our leaders. Abacha died, that is why we are still, still sending us money from the grave. <laughs> the ones that are here, their money is with them. And yeah. some are in Switzerland oh, and boy. even yeah. in this America. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, I wonder how they go to sleep knowing fully where that people are suffering around them mm. and then the fun men to all of us, they take it away, keep it somewhere and it's not doing anything. They have no conscience. That's really all I have to say because I don't know why anybody would continue to allow these things to, to happen the way they, they do. Kind of your advocacy for me was actually very, very sad. It, I, I looked at it and I thought, wow, you know, where are we really going to go from here? Um, Nigeria is for sale. I think Nigeria has actually been for sale for a long, the sold long Nigeria time. For Probably sale. since sold. our... Yes, yeah, sold. sold, I mean, <laughs> you sold. know, for a yeah. long, long time. And yeah. now, I don't even know what we're selling to China, but sure, we're selling something. Yeah. There's something no, China they are buying, is trying no, to No, they are buying buy. a portion of Nigeria now. <laughs> yeah. They didn't come to buy early, but they are buying the only portion They're remaining. buying what's left, exactly. Wow. Um, <laughs> it, it's just too sad. I'm sorry I have to be one of those people that, you know what, I'm not so offended by this whole US. Supervise them. Doing supervision. Because at least if it means we get three uh, complete yeah, projects Lagos, Badon, gone out of it, please, the, so I will take that because the it's, it, rather than take nothing. Um, but it, it is a shame that now it's outside. We have gone to the point where we're being supervised by outside forces. So they're, they're telling us to review uh, review the Supreme, Supreme Court's Court, decision. They're telling us that uh, we must spend money in this particular way. Mm -hmm. They're telling us, well, if you don't behave right, we'll review yes, immigration we'll, policy. Yeah. Well, to be honest, Again, I don't mind so much because we, the people, have shown we don't wow. have... No, no, no. It's no. not because I think it is the way no, to yeah. go. But we, the people, have shown that we, we, don't, we don't seem to have the power yet to fight for ourselves. So even though these people are doing... The, their behavior is oppressive. Mm. Um, I'm not so against it because somehow it may work for in our favor for it. now. Um, I, I hope we will get out of this mess. I hope we will get a leader with some vision who really, truly wants the best for leader this country. But right now, what I see are leaders that see this place as almost a graveyard that is really, I'm going to enter, I'm going to take what's left and, exactly. and let the country I really, really implode. I really do believe that yeah. the leaders don't have any confidence in Nigeria mm. themselves. Mm. themselves. And yes. you know, so there's that externalization. Mm. Everything you take, Send it abroad, send it abroad. Mm. And you know what? You didn't even, Nigeria has been sold already, in my yeah, view. Sold. Because you didn't even mention the debt problem we have. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We've never owed this much. Well, so we assess the state of the nation, whereas you assess us. Let's see how we're faring, shall we? On sacrificing our sons and daughters, Abisola Abiodun says, diabolic cultural mindsets that, destroys, that destroy others. Hmm, preach. <laughs> Thanks. On bride price must go, Abiodu Martins, a different Abiodu now, Adeni Ron, has a lot to say. Yeah, bride price is not based on the premise that women are commodities to be sold. That's a rather mischievous statement, Uche. <laughs> Tap on the wrist. <laughs> in fact, in most instances, her family members will specifically tell you that their daughter is not for sale. 
It is for this reason that the bride price is a token and symbolic amount. Of course, there are families, hamlets, and villages that stretch and abuse this practice and request large sums. This is the exception rather than the norm. Bride price is actually based on the premise that the bride becomes the husband's responsibility to provide and protect her. It is a, it is a purely symbolic gesture, acknowledging but never paying off the husband's permanent debt to the wife's parents. Chika, <laughs> the young man who said, who said that as long as he paid the bride price, I can cheat and do all manner of things is thoroughly wrong and should be authoritatively corrected. He has made a selective interpretation of the meaning of bride price. As for those suitors who borrow, beg, or steal to raise a bride price, they are either foolish or ill-advised. If you can't really afford it, don't get married. Mm -mm. Thanks, Abiodun. You certainly got to have your say on that one. Mm. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.pluscvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Tokwe, our guest advocate, asks some pertinent questions in the light of the recent deregistration of political parties. Well, it's, it's, it's going back away now. Take it away, Tokwe. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. You're watching The Advocate on PLUS TV Africa. Look before you leap is a useful adage that essentially says to me, consider the outcome of your action before you take it. Does Nigeria need multi-party democracy is the question. So the INEC, Independent National Electoral Commission, purportedly the registered 74 political parties via the network news on the 6th of February 2020, only to start running around to serve the political parties with tacit letters of deregistration days after. It is reminiscent of a culture of disrespect for governance because proper regulation demands dialogue, transparency, mutual respect and decorum. The INEC seems to still be under the yoke of the military regime where parties were abrogated, promulgated, proscribed and birthed all over again by military diktats and with the force of the jackboot. Even the idea by which INEC executives have been seen to make statements to the effect that five political parties will remain in Nigeria, that commercial political parties will be deregistered, or that it is easier to register a political party than to register a limited liability company in Nigeria, as wrong as these statements are, are totally antithetical to the concept of proper regulation. I believe the INEC has serious lessons to learn in the art and science of regulation of anything. Apparently, the politics of Nigeria has poisoned uh, other sectors until we get the politics right from regulation to implement, implementation, no hope. But a great debate is thrown up as to how many parties Nigeria needs. The truth is that in a proper democracy as we hope to be, no one can or should legislate the number of political parties. It is irritating having a great number of political parties, it must be said, but the only crime in that is irritation, <laughs> as well as the cost of printing long ballot papers, no more. A worse crime we have been living with and which we seem very prepared to continue living with is the crime of malgovernance. Nigeria is one of the most corrupt nations on earth with rising inequality, illiteracy, and all forms of poverty, what they call multi-dimensional poverty. These ills have been made worse by the political parties which seem to have been etched onto the minds of Nigerians as a result of having been around for long and providing abodes for our permanent politicians who usually dash, dash from one to the other. A right-thinking person may suggest that it is time Nigerians try to overturn the status quo 
a situation whereby everybody in the ruling party were also in the former ruling party, a situation where no one gets punished for jumping from one ruling party to the other with the sole aim of continuing with the gravy train. But that seems not to be a priority to Nigerians. Nigerians seem to be more interested in getting rid of the young parties, some of which actually are actually striving hard to cause a new thinking around our politics, a much required new thinking, no matter how hard that may be. Nigerians are not in support of the young parties because of several reasons. Many have no time to start looking into what those parties stand for. No time. Most Nigerians are also illiterate, unfortunately, and cannot muster the required intellectual gusto to start to engage on matters of ideology. And of course, we know that all it takes is maybe a mudu of gari to convince a lot of our people. Yet other Nigerians are just irritated that some young people could ever imagine that they could champion a new cause for the polity. As in, who are you? Where are you calling from? Then there was the failure of 2019 elections. Can we consider that a failure? How many institutions funded by honest money can go into elections in a country such as ours, where elections are driven by money and violence? How many young political parties can afford the money to purchase weapons and match the old ones bullet for bullet? None. Nigeria as a nation and society should press reset on our political system. But we seem to be saying we want more of the same. Nigeria, Nigeria needs a new way of doing politics, and it is among these new parties, perhaps, that we may find those gems of new thinking, certainly not among the old. Twenty years is enough time for them to have performed the magic, or at least show us where we may be heading. INEC must, of necessity, do its job of regulating political parties, absolutely, but that job must be done transparently, decorously, and legally performed. What is more, the INEC breached the Constitution, which was clear in its provis provision, even as amended under Section 225, subsection A, B, and C, that all elections must be conducted down to the world level before a call can be made as to whether a party has fallen short or not. The debate rages on, but the 74 parties have sworn to immediately recover their mandates and uh, through the courts and to extract serious monetary damages from INEC for damaging their franchise. And I think we got a victory on Monday 17th of February from the court. We must ensure that no government institution can so disdainfully treat any other institution or persons under their regulatory or supervisory purview. I want to completely disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I can see him shaking his head at yeah. times. I want to completely disagree. He's a member disagree. of PDP. I, hey. I know he belongs to one the of only those. two parties. Um, you, we're going to torpedo you, them anyway. You see, uh, you said something. After the registration, I next started looking for offices, some of the offices, to, serve them. to even serve them. That mm. means these parties don't even exist. That means they did not try some, in Abinish. Some, let me finish. Let, let no, me, no, no, no. You are making them, a call on that. Some of them... That means these political parties, majority of them only exist in briefcases. Oh, that's what I'm saying. And, and so... And really, that's because okay. and that's why during the election we're here, and then we call some of them pretenders. Hmm. You don't wake up two months to election and you say you want to be president of Nigeria. You can torpedo any party if you start organization early. The end of one election cycle begins another one. But how many of these political parties, after the election, do you see or hear of? that they are mobilizing, they are even holding congresses, they are electing local leaders. No. And so, even now, political parties that don't have offices, that don't even exist, how are you going to participate in local government elections if not only you exist to sell franchise or to sell, uh, if, if PDP uh, did not give somebody ticket, he looks for one other fringe party, it's okay. You, you sell that ticket to the person. That's what we saw during the last election. And that is why somebody can be in um, uh, ACN uh, today, and then after, immediately after the primaries of ACN, he didn't get it, he moves to YPP. He gets the, the ticket of YPP, or he moves to Zenit mm -hmm. Party. And so you had candidates that even do not know the executive members of their party. There's need to, you agree, there's need to sanitize the system. Mm. And that is why you had the inclusion of Section 225 Paragraph A in the Fourth Amendment. And then if we're saying we are waiting for local state to conduct local government election, there are some states that we never conduct local government election because 
our laws are observed by breach. Mm. And, and so we can wait forever. At the end of the day, we are still the one that will criticize INEC tomorrow. Although this process is too cumbersome. And political parties, do you know that some political uh, parties will contest for governorship at the end of the day, they won't get two votes? Okay, uh, Libras, let, 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 let me take you so from there. So they should go and, sorry, quickly, they mm. should go and do their homework first. Let us see membership, and then we'll take them seriously. Uh, let, me, let me take it from there, because I think there's a balancing that needs to be done. In as much as, yes, some of the points you make are valid, you know, um, if maybe if they were uh, no, some of them I, I, I do valid. identify that some of them are valid. But I, what I want to pick on is the fact that even the context for deregulating is is, is yes. not appropriate. So that was what what, I even to the ones that are left standing, what the criteria by which they're left standing is is the money thing again. Is the no, no, no. No, I'm coming. You made your point. Let me land it. So, so he's saying that you know, for example, when you were saying, oh, what are they doing? How are they mobilizing? Do you know how these people are even managing the monetary the monetary uh, demands on them mm. to even have run the election in the first place? And you're telling somebody who is still recovering from yeah. having. Exhausted themselves and didn't get against the behemoths of APC and PDP a who have more than a big tranche. A Those same people, people who are looting us election. and funding the elections. I'm coming. Let me let yeah. me get on. Let me get what on. You have let me get on. So, so I, 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 I must finish what I'm saying. I must finish what I'm saying. So my point is really like rather than even care about because as it is, if you're talking about sanitizing, the whole thing must come down and start again. Let's get a proper criteria for electing because I'd rather have a human being like this discussing affairs of the nation than the people we have sitting there, Godfathers swapping between parties. So let's question change the criteria is, entirely, then can, you have the my question, attention. The question so is, then, we're not interested. The issue is, so what, what uh, you I want have to in those let political me just parties? Come yeah, come in. Then Libras then must be saying no, that. Take it, take, take it. I, I, Libras, wait, wait, let's change, let let change, change, let change, change talk. Yeah. The fact that Libras has not got involved in, in starting something of that. It's not about And people like you, no wait, I'm saying, people like you, very vocal, should actually get involved. The fact that you haven't doesn't make everybody that has tried wrong. First of all, our constitution allows for multiple uh, political parties. So, Abby, am I not it right? Does. Absolutely. Yeah. It does. It does. So, I don't see how INEX suddenly fe felt like they had the power to just deregister. Secondly, have I have a problem, and you too, liberals, you should have that problem too, because we've talked about rule of law, processes, and everything. Absolutely. I don't like the way INEC went about this. It's all about money. Yeah. Mm, uh, I think so. Money, size, power, and, but the thing is, is um, you have to run a political party with money. Yeah. Absolutely, that, you, know. you do. And so it is how we get the money Absolutely. that's the problem. And that makes certain parties able to scale these yes. criteria, yes, uh, and others not. And because we all have a right to have our parties, uh, you have a party, if you meet, if you've got members, you've got financing, it doesn't yeah. matter how small, no matter you how can't small, yeah. push a man aside mm. because he's small. Mm. Um, no, and, and that looks like what's beginning to happen. Look so very quickly, I just want to say, I want to say together, okay, NCNC, AG, NPC of old, they were run by members' contribution. Yes. Today, the so-called parties that you are consolidating are run by people dipping their hands into no, no, government the, money. The, 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 now, the, number two, quickly, I, I, would not, I would like, disagree with you that you believe that governors should be, it should be at their whims and capacities when they run elections. The constitution no, is concerned no, about Nigeria no, and especially no. people at the grassroots. Yes. Okay, okay, so that's why it's done. If you this. don't have two hours, I won't come back. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> two hours for me alone. There you go. <laughs> the process of how we elect our leaders is always a conversation worth having. Absolutely. I'm told that Chuka has been on a particularly a particular necessary conversation for three weeks now, yeah. and it shows no sign of cooling off. Carry go, Chuka. <laughs> If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. So here I go again. The mega city confusion, part three, urban development. So I have satisfied myself that the way forward in the development of a rich, resilient, and versatile Lagos lies partly in the development of some of the very same characteristics it already possesses, but which our planners and government officials deem too lowly for a mega city. Good ideas come to naught if they are delayed or thwarted. This is almost always the case. Lagos is run like a fiefdom of one man and his followers. His son is behind the biggest of the public billboard marketers as Lagos has its views obliterated by huge boards. One hears through the grapevine that people close to or in power here have lined up to own the new Okada Keke boat taxi businesses that will be licensed shortly. I can only wait to see the gentrification of Takwa so that it becomes an escape for the rich. Now, if they did this, 
but charge good sums for the plots of land. Then apply the proceeds to adequate resettlement plans for those evicted and other low cost and affordable housing schemes. Perhaps I might see some sense finally in our government, but I doubt it very much. Decentralization of Lagos is key to positive progress. We cannot continue to have most important activities all located on what we call the island. Incentives should be explored to spread things around. Housing too ought to be mixed in some areas, bringing opportunities for some affordable and lower cost estates, even in central areas. We should build new, stable and aesthetically pleasing accommodation on stilts in areas where these are viable. Makoko is in itself a beautiful idea, a romantic one. The view from a distance proves this. It is when you go up close that you can see the, the, the bad aspect. Lagos is water. A system of low-lying floodplains and dikes ought to be immediately explored, designed and priced as a means of controlling flood. It is expensive, very, very expensive, but we are failing to save our city if we do not do this. New ports along the coast in Ondo State, for instance, are required so that we may shut down a Papa Keys, turn it into a new neighborhood, connect it to Marina. Tinkan Island will see reduced activity and the Bafon Petroleum Jet is removed and moved to less metropolitan area. Marina car parks should be removed, replaced with grassed park with multi-level parking in five circular structures that resemble beautiful silos. Now, will the rail line ever be completed? It is becoming an embarrassment. Put out Ambody's boats and buses, add some more, bring back regulated Okada, enforce good driving manners, create new strategic transport routes and bridges. Lagos is a wealth of ideas waiting to happen, the collage city of my dreams, but the fiefdom will have to be destroyed first. This is crazy. Chica for Minister I mean, of Urban yeah, Development. If you, don't, if you don't know, this is the perfect blueprint. As in, if you're a minister and you have no clue what to do, this is your blueprint. Please take it and run with it. I don't see anything here that Chuka is even proposing that is really out of our grasp or out of our reach. Well, the the we, dikes and silos, yeah, it says. I mean, all it, these are just small, 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 small. Like you said, build beautiful stilts. Let people see the beauty of Lagos. Stop making Lagos into this concrete... Uh, Jungle. Yeah, it's just nasty. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really love this, Chukan. Like, I mean, I, like we said, we, we're, we're, you really should run. You know, Minister of... Develop, uh, development. <laughs> no, but you see, no. What, what I like about it is, because I'm, I'm not sure how... I can't verify that, you know, I'm not an architect, so I'm not an urban developer. Mm, so I'm I know trusting, that maybe that conversation him. needs to be had to look into how viable in terms of practice. Correct. But I know you have that experience. Mm. What I even like is that you're thinking, and mm. you're thinking yeah. about incorporating what already exists. Mm. You're right, actually. Makoko does look attractive. Yes. It's like a mini Venice. Mm. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and a lot of films are being shot, be. shot there, yes. you know, because people like yeah, the idea right. of boats between houses. Correct. Uh -huh. yeah. So we just need to find a way of making sure the water system is cleaner. People are not yes. pulling into the water, yes. you know, correct. and then That's it can it. become, yeah. you know, yeah. some kind of attraction. So the things we I haven't thought about. Can I chip in that? Mm. Um, my, my big issue from my perspective as an economist is that there's actually, uh, I look at the population growing, I look at the plans in terms of urbanization and all of that and housing itself. I see that uh, so for 60 years, this country has never had a plan for the accommodation of the most vulnerable yes. people. They don't care. So the best we had is okay, Jack, no Conde. Jack Conde has, Jack Conde is the, ex, you know, the example the, they give. Yeah. But Jack Conde built 29,000 flats in Lagos, all right? And yeah. for civil servant, two bedroom, three bedroom flat. Yeah. We're saying that even if somebody was just a single person just moving around, what can he afford? Mm. What plans have you had for the, the average guy that's living in his father's mm. home? NYSE you know, students. Yes. You know, so let me tell you, in South Africa, they built 605,000 uh, what they call hostel rooms mm. under apartheid. So what I've seen is what they call elite consensus. Yes. They have not had it in this part, in this Nigeria. Mm. Lastly, on the real issue, mm. I, I begged Fashola as a columnist myself. Okay. I begged Fashola, and all these guys don't listen. I don't, I don't support any of them anymore. <laughs> you know, that look, if all you did was launch two kilos of this of metro before you left, you, left, yeah. you would have set the ball rolling that whoever is coming will increase it. Yeah. Now it's moribund. If you go down Badagri ex Expressway, people run from Ajangbadi, from Vokes, from all they, they dump refuse in on, on the, the rail on track. The rail wow. track. Chuka, um, maybe you have to have a part five. My goodness. Of this, <laughs> um, because if you look at the mortgage system here, yeah. it's oh, completely dead. It's non-existent. It's dead. 
people <laughs> so civil servants for this. Civil servants. Interest rate is crazy. So tomorrow when somebody says, okay, we'll deregister some of the mortgages bank, we we'll say, no, you are not caring for the poor. That's a topic for another day. Yeah, come <laughs> people on. say, people contribute money every month. Right. Contributory uh, a fund yes. for Federal Mortgage Bank. Yes. Mortgage yes. Bank. Yes. And yet there are no housing. So mm. Federal Mortgage Bank are looking for people who are building to partner with. Yes. And yet you are not giving funds to anybody to build. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you look at, it talks about urbanization. I said it here last time. This Oniru, for example, the whole of Oniru yeah. can house everybody in Victoria Island. All you just no, need I, is, I, I, let, let me finish. Okay. All you need is just two acres of land, 25 story buildings. And at the end of the day, all of this other space that you occupy, people will. And so you know the number of cars you will take off the road because we've had to do a census of the cars that come into VI every, yes, every day and go out. Come to VI by, by eight, nine sometime. Apart from those of us clubbing, every other place is empty. Mm. And then in the morning, everybody again from Ikorodu, Ajangbadi, uh, Kokomaiko, uh, and they, and every, they converge on, on the island. Mm. And that's why there's so much traffic. Mm. And so if you, if you create opportunity for some of these people to live in Victoria Island and Ikoi, you'll be surprised the number of cars you can take I mean, off but, the road. I want to balance it by saying I like the fact that he talked of decentralizing. Because decentralizing. If, you, yes. if you bring in, you still cause congestion that, no, no, eventually. No, when so we say while you're bringing that, in, that's, you take industry that's flip out. Side, that's yeah. the flip side of it mm -hmm. also, at which is where I want also going to. Why concentrate offices in Victoria Island? Yeah, yes. why? What, that, which is that's why it. I moved out of Lagos Island. I said yeah. I, can't, I don't see why I should drive from Bagada every morning through the bridge to, to Lagos Island and drive back. When some of my clients, I'm the one that go to them, they don't even come to me. Mm -hmm. anyway, and, and so yes. my office is just about five blocks from my house. So Excellent. I walk down, I can stay in the office till 12 midnight, and I walk back home. Mm -hmm. and, and so why don't you have some of these industrial cities in Bagada, yes. in Okokomaiko, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. all of these places, says. so that, and then create access to these places. So at the end of the day, people, somebody who lives in Ilukbeju, can walk in Ilukbeju comfortably. Yes. It yes. must not be the banks only yes. Yes. where you okay, you are in a branch in Ilukbeju. And then the day you are posted out to Victoria Island, you know, the whole thing the get messed up for you. Mm. It's it just because we are not thinking. And then the followers also, we like, you know, hailing. We just take one point, the governor is walking mm. as if it's his money. Uh, maybe, maybe just to build on that, it's not even that we're not thinking because I think even if they didn't want to think, you once said, we will even think for them. It's because the orientation of the way we practice politics, the people that are there are not, it's almost like they're not coming there to do the, the things that will benefit us because the ideas are there, even if you don't have it yourself, like Uche said, there are people who have it. Mm. And if you're genuinely looking to make a difference, you will attract those yeah, people. Just if, Chuka went to, if Chuka went to any of these so-called big but, parties, but I'm even saying, they sorry, will tell him to, to say, take a maybe, 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 maybe they, maybe then they, they'll yeah. hit you with yeah. 50 million yeah. naira bill at some yeah. point in time and they won't even give and you the you, platform. You talk about, we are giving you people like you platform. What I'm even saying is that the genesis of so this has to do with the electoral system because if you come in on the tails of a godfather, mm. your preoccupation is to pay back. Exactly. Mm. So your preoccupation is not to actually deliver. Absolutely. Which and is so why you don't sit down and expect that somebody should bring you on board. Yeah, you and which is why also mobilization here, we like quick fix. Quick fix had never fixed anything. In my area, I started from my area and there is nowhere. Do you know yesterday, yesterday as I speak to you, they brought a generator to my church. The area boys imparted the generator. They had to call me. Please, oh, your boys. Your boy, how did they, they become my boys? Yeah, boys? Because I relate with them. I mobilize them. You know, you don't just sit down in your office, expensive office, and then you wake up one day and say you want to become a governor, a counselor. You must relate. You must mix up. Roll up your sleeve and then mix up. That is how Labour Party became a mega party with PDP. Uh, uh, Libras uh, uh, for uh, which one uh, now? Uh, as much, well, <laughs> as much as possible, we try to tell it like it is so we can change how it is for the better. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash forward slash The Advocate. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, just Plus TV Africa. And so, until next week, same time when we'll be driving more contentious conversations in the interest of a better society. So let's continue advocating behind the scenes. Bye. Bye bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking, it's that greed, it's that 
mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.